A couple days ago, I decided to tidy the pantry and found my first iPhone. Oh, it was a very cool device at the time. And I also found my very first phone, and it's a thousand times inferior to this old iPhone. The difference between them is only 20 years. But if you compare them, it's like a stick and a space rocket. Now look at this 1955 invention. It looks suspiciously familiar. For example, in 2017, the ball for the final of Taca de Portugal was delivered on exactly the same thing, after more than 60 years. And then I wondered, are all modern inventions really modern? Be sure to watch the video to the end and you'll find out why Elon Musk's electric car was invented 200 years ago, how people have been flying in cars since the Second World War, and why new inventions are just forgotten old ones. Let's go! In 2018, Elon Musk launched the Tesla electric car into space. You surely remember all the hype. After all these years, the car came close to Mars. Well, it came close on a space scale. It went 7.41 million kilometers from the red planet, but before reaching it, the electric car has come a really long way. And I'm not talking about a journey through our galaxy. In fact, such cars appeared even earlier than the usual gasoline engine. Back in 1828, the Hungarian inventor Anjos Jedlik made an electric car that looked more like a skateboard. Yeah, this thing really rode. However, it's unlikely that an adult would have been able to ride it. And this car appeared in 1948, it could go five hours without recharging, and they had to throw the cable out the window to charge it. His wife passes the charging cable out to him, and once it's connected to the car, the whole process is over in an hour. <laughs> high technology. Yes, the electric car wasn't invented by Elon Musk, and not even some other guys from Tesla. It all started a very long time ago. Wait, wait, wait. If electric cars were made so long ago, why have we been using gasoline all this time, polluting the environment? Well, between 1828 and today, the gap is almost 200 years. Why did mankind need so much time? Didn't our ancestors not realize how cool the technology they invented was? Well, it's a little more complicated than that. To understand everything, you need to go to that era. Since the end of the 19th century, the US and other developed countries began an era of rapid economic growth. And where there's a lot of money, talented people are able to realize themselves and create different inventions, both brilliant and absolutely delusional. Or both. For example, a pedestrian catcher. The idea is quite simple, to make life safer for pedestrians. Being hit by a car, even in 1938, was a dubious pleasure, dangerous for your health. A device similar to the bucket of a snowplow was created so that people could avoid injuries. It was pulled out every time a pedestrian was too close to the bumper and caught them. This is unlikely to work at modern speeds, but the idea is interesting. But this is how they proposed to solve the problem with parking in 1927 in Paris. There were no difficulties to find a place at that time, but the inventors still created such mega-moving vehicles. And you know, I'd like to have a couple of them. Parking is a complicated thing. Well, what about a device called the monowheel? You've probably seen this. It's a motorcycle located as if it was inside a wheel. I don't know how it could have come to someone's mind, but it did. In 1927, even small children could ride such monowheels, and apparently they looked quite happy. Yeah, we can't say the same about that mustache guy with the hat. By the way, mono wheels are still used today. Now it's not an entertainment for children of three or four years, but a serious sport for fans of thrill. Some people even managed to set records on the mono wheel. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, today, the top speed slightly exceeds 117 kilometers per hour. Not so much if you compare it with a car, but hey, there's a man inside the wheel. Cut them some slack. Oh, and look at this. It's believed that this is the very first version of the car alarm system. It was invented by an unknown prisoner from Denver in 1913. A few years later, a more modern version appeared, which reported to the owner about the theft. But until then, dogs were used to protect the cars. Dogs were used to protect any property. But for cars, people came up with an idea to use a hoax. And this is only a small part of what was invented at that time. Electric cars were also actively developing. Moreover, they were very popular. From 1900 to 1910, 38% of all U.S. cars had electric engines, 40% had steam engines, and only 22% had gasoline engines. Perhaps these figures don't mean anything to you, so here's a simple comparison. Now electric cars are 0.7% of the world's cars. You feel how much the market has changed? Originally, the power reserve and speed of electric and gasoline cars were about the same. The main disadvantage of electric cars was a complex recharging system and cheap gasoline for ordinary cars. Yes, these are the main reasons why the electric car literally dropped out of the race. Interest in them was up and down for some time, and all because of a change in oil prices. 
years. It took almost 200 years for people to look around, see the results of their activities, and think about the environment and take electric cars seriously. But there were other reasons that slowed down the development of electric cars and threw them back by almost two centuries. Or, well, rather not back, but off to the side. I'm talking about world wars. Because of them, all research has turned in a different direction, and values have changed dramatically. You have to admit, hardly anyone would think of monowheels when the whole world was focused on tanks, guns, and fighters. But it was in the 40s that an inventor named Ali Agnides thought about creating a unique all-terrain vehicle. He invented the concept of huge, inclined, hemispherical wheels, and by 1950, he developed a prototype called Rhino. Here comes a revolutionary new vehicle, the Rhino, a sight to shake the soul of even a truck driver. And it wasn't just any all-terrain vehicle, but an amphibian, capable of going almost on any terrain. Well, maybe not mountains. The low center of gravity allowed the Rhino to turn 75 degrees without tipping over, and the whole machine weighed 5 tons despite the aluminum body. Some people thought that the inventor wanted to create a better tank replacement, but let's be honest, Rhino is unusual, funny, and completely unsuitable for a mobile artillery platform. And aluminum wheels are also a strange choice for an armored vehicle. Perhaps that's why the strange all-terrain vehicle went to the dustbin of history. It just had no use. Well, almost. I wouldn't be surprised if I was told it was the rhino that inspired Kanye West on this thing in this video. Kanye likes to look for inspiration in unexpected places. But what about other prototypes and cool ideas? Flying machines, for example. You can find them in a lot of films, from Back to the Future 2 and The Fifth Element to Blade Runner. Who knows? Maybe if it hadn't been for the two world wars, we would have learned to fly long ago. And these aren't just my dreams. It seems that humanity had all the chances. Just look at these concepts. The air car, which rides not on wheels but on an invisible cushion of air. For example, the civilian car, Curtis Wright Model 2500 Air Car of 1959, which goes without wheels. It used aviation engines placed under the hood and under the trunk lid. They powered two potent fans. As a result, the car floated about 38 centimeters from the ground and weighed more than a thousand kilos. And it looked like a huge flying refrigerator. In 1934, inventor Waldo Waterman created a kind of aircraft with removable wings. He even assembled a few specimens, and some of them were tested with real flights. But as a result, the flying machine finished its days in a museum. And this is a flying machine from the 40s, this time with a removable tail, part of the fuselage, wings. Hell, it looks so funny. Unfortunately, in the 20th century, people couldn't finish the job, but our contemporaries continued. Today, you can meet hovercrafts and quite working prototypes of flying machines. We flew, yes! For example, Terrafugia Transition with folding wings. By design, Transition will move on the asphalt at normal highway speeds, and in the air it'll be able to catch up with sports planes. But it should fit in a standard car garage. Would you buy it? Write in the comments. Oh, by the way, do you remember the guy from the beginning of this video? Yeah, the guy on the flying platform. This design was called Hiller VZ-1 Pawnee and was developed in the late 40s. Of course, for the needs of the army, a total of six units were produced. Alas, in spite of the fact that the platform was steady and the man didn't fall off it, the U.S. Army found the invention impractical. Well, we can understand them. Such a device can't be used as a fighting machine. The platform was flying too low, was too slow, and too small. We know that two of the six prototypes survived all the tests, and both are in museums. Imagine if the army approved. Perhaps today, such platforms would be even cooler than the thing on which the Green Goblin flew. And without all the computer graphics. Although, you know, the device doesn't have to be drawn to be angular. Just look at the first amphibious car in history that anyone could buy. Amphicar 770 was produced in Germany in the 60s. The car was supposed to be used by those who lived on the banks of rivers to save money on buying a boat. In total, about 3,800 copies were produced, but the amphibian never reached the commercial success. Special license was required to drive the car on water, and the engine power wasn't enough to move quickly on land. But it seems that this car inspired James Bond writers. Although Agent 007 got a more pleasant design. Today, humanity has learned how to create really cool things. It seems that just a little more and we'll all end up in one of those fantastic movies. But almost every technology that's used now was invented much earlier. Modern inventors have simply found a worthy use for them. Well, I have a great idea how to use your likes, just like this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you later.